gosh, do you know what? It's a really weird one for me. I've been asked this before. And in fact, I was talking about it with someone yesterday. And I was saying the rational part of me is just thinking, be normal about it. It's absolutely fine. And actually any normal player that comes back having played for us, I'm kind of not bothered about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I kind of give them a little ripple of applause and that's it. Move on. I don't boo. I've never been one to do that anyway. And I wouldn't do that for Christian Eriksen either. But there's just a tinge of disappointment. That's all it is. A tinge of disappointment that he didn't stick with us, which I know it sounds really silly and, and because he didn't owe us anything. He didn't have to stay. His contract came to an end. He was more than, uh, you know, more than... An, uh, it was. He was allowed to talk to other clubs, absolutely. I just hoped, I really hoped he would um, fall in love with us and have that emotional connection. And that's why I thought he would stay with us. But... Yeah. That's the only sort of fan part of me that's a little like so oh, disappointed. It's not cheering, it's not booing, it's just a oh, ripple of applause. Ripple of applause. I'll yeah. appreciate what okay. he did for us because he did brilliant he things did brilliant, for us. Yeah. And I still am so delighted that he played for us. And to say that Christian Eriksen played in the red and white at Brentford will be it's just brilliant. But um yeah, there's just that little bit of disappointment that he's not Radio still with us. I mean, come on, you Radio asked me to talk Brentford. about it and then this comes up. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not the only one joining us to talk about Brentford because uh looking ahead to this game, it is uh, former Brentford striker uh turned club ambassador Marcus Gale who joins us. Marcus. Marcus. Hello. Good morning to you both. How are you doing? Right. Yeah, we're good, Marcus. What about you? How do you feel? Are you more in the camp of, oh, we'll give him a bit of stick, or you're like Natalie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tend to lean with Natalie on this one. Okay. And, uh, good a man. nice little applause to, yeah. to welcome him back. And um, we move once on. the whistle blows, it's, it's a different story. We, we, we look to win the game. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, it's a really intriguing one, this one, isn't it, Marcus? Because you, you look back to last season, Manchester United beat Brentford twice. But the game at home in particular, mm -hmm. that first half, how Brentford didn't go in at half time with the lead, that they unfortunately then got, went on to lose 3 0. It's still something I wonder in my head because the chances Brentford had, they just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, which was actually the tale of a lot of the season. Yeah, it, it was a. It was a school day for us again last season, um, playing the likes of Manchester United at home, and we showed against all the, you know, the, the top clubs that came to the stadium that we're more than a match for them. And it was about taking chances on the night. And to be fair, Man Manchester United, they just had that little bit of quality yeah. in those key moments to, to grab their goals and they, they ran away with the game. Marcus, you played as a centre forward and, you know, mm -hmm. you like the combative side of, of playing like I did. Um, Ivan Tony, if, you know, if he's wants to get on someone, get on Martinez because he'll have a huge height advantage. Mm. Maguire's got a big job in handling if he does take him on. And I think between Mbumo and uh, Ivan Tony, there's a lot of threats there from Brentford. Yeah, of course, no doubt. And um, Ivan will relish going up against, if it is Harry Maguire today, then he'll relish that challenge. He, he loves that competitive edge. He's a very intelligent player and he, he looks for the weakness in his defenders as well that he's up against. So, I'm, I'm going to be intrigued with that, that sort of battle today. And when you look back to last weekend, Brentford were at Leicester. They were 2-0 mm -hmm. down inside, what, 47 minutes? 1-0 down at half-time and then Leicester scored pretty much from kick-off to make it 2-0. But Brentford fought back to earn a point. It was a draw that felt like... I mean, I was there. I was in the away end. It was absolutely electric, I must say, the away end. And it was a point that felt like a, like a win. Massive confidence boost for Brentford then coming into this. Yeah, you know, when you concede the first goal and you go in at half time, you think, OK, we just regroup. And then you come out to start the second half and you can see straight away. And I thought, oh, here we go. This is part of our, our sort of history over the, over many years. And then, you know, we showed that resilience, that yeah. determination that we've not seen over the last year, especially in the Premier League. But to come back from 2 0 down away from home was, was a significant sort of sign of things to come for us is that mm. we're not here just to, to stick around and, and make up the numbers, but we're here to improve, learn from last year, and it was great to, to get a point out of it. I would add to that as well that Brentford have sort of two ways of playing, and if they need to go quite direct at times, they'll do that. If they need to get it on the ground and move the ball around, they do that well as well. So, you know, this isn't a side that's one dimensional in any shape or form. And we've had to, to be um, adjustable to those sort of decisions on the pitch. You know, 
when you look at the Manchester United team, that they're, they're conceding all types of different goals. And um, I think the mixture that we have today and throughout the season is that we can change it up. We can keep the ball on the deck and move it around and, and play those cute through passes. Or we can go direct from, from Rea into Tony and, and mix it up that way. So we've got you know a full artillery of, of different styles that we can throw against um, the team of Manchester United today. And it's been a busy summer for transfer activity. Mikael Damsgaard is the latest player that's been brought in by Brentford. A lot of people are saying he's the direct replacement for Christian Eriksen, although maybe isn't quite the same style and same sort of player. But are you happy with the business that Brentford have done, Marcus? Yeah, when I look at the, I think it's five signings we've made, the very good signings, four internationals and players of, of for now and our long-term future as well. When you look at the ages of Aaron Hickey yeah. and Keen Lewis Potter, Mikel Damsgaard as well. You're thinking, you know, the future is very, very bright. And it just shows you the sort of key signs we have. But with Thomas Strakosha, I look at him as a, as a number one uh, goalkeeper as well. And it's great to have two number ones that can push each other. Um, and when you look at the sort of fixture pile up at the start of this season, going into that World Cup, there's a lot of games to play and you want to keep everybody fresh and competitive. So I think what we've done this year is, is brilliant and fair play to uh, Phil Giles in, in that recruitment with his team. Yeah. Uh, and one player who isn't a new signing but might feel like a new signing is Josh De Silva, who scored that equalising yeah. goal at Leicester last weekend. I know, I mean, I know you well, Marcus. We worked together many times at Brentford and socialised at Brentford occasions as well. But he's a player that all Brentford fans are just rooting for because we know the quality he can bring. He missed, what, 14 months of of, um, of playing time due to a hip injury, just kind of crept into the squad towards the end of last season. But wow, what a way to announce yourself on the Premier League stage with that goal against Leicester. Well, for us inside Brentford, we know that's a typical Josh Disorder yeah. goal. Yeah. To the outside world, we're like, wow, who's this kid? But we all know his four qualities and... You know, we spoke about obviously Christian Eriksen at the start of this 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 piece here, and I wasn't too not too disappointed because it, for me it just galvanises our squad. It mm. gives the likes of Josh De Silva the opportunity yeah. to showcase his talents, and I think he, he made a brilliant announcement last week mm. with with the way he took that goal. So I'm, I'm very pleased that he's back fully fit because he, he's going to be a problem this season in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus, ambassador role at Brentford, what does that entail? Are you doing a lot more than, you know, we might think? <laughs> you enjoying yourself well, or, you know? Yeah, I, I'm enjoying myself working full-time, Tony. Yeah. Um, at, at my age, which is cool. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I've got my space in the office. So I love that. Good. I've got a great team up in there. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm well, he's got his little desk. Quite a lot. I've yes, seen his desk at the office, yeah. I've seen you, Mark. Double screens, Nat, double screens. <laughs> I know, it's big time. How have, they, how have they given you this responsibility, Marcus? It's incredible. But, I know, I know. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. It's funny, Marcus, isn't it? Because you look back and you think when you play at certain times of club, I say to his people when, when I was at Chelsea, I said the club that Chelsea was in 1992-94 is nowhere near the club it is today. Exactly. Uh, and you might probably say the same thing with Brentford. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. It's, it's like a totally different club, new club, same spirit, but just different location. And, and, and the amount of people that we have working at the club now, it's amazing. You know, mm. if you go back 10, 15 years ago, there's probably about 10 or 15 people that would operate the club. But now we've got well over 100 people. Um, and it shows you how the club is growing. Um, and it needs the additional support with extra employees to come in and, and help drive this, this Brentford machine along smoothly. So it's all good stuff. Good. All good stuff in it. Just lastly, what are you expecting then tonight um, between Brentford and Manchester United? Can Brentford win well, or will Manchester United bounce back after that defeat last time out? I think I'm going to go for a score draw today okay. at the G-Tech Community Stadium. I think I think both teams will score. Um, I'm going to look at the strengths and weaknesses of United. that They are struggling in, in areas of the pitch and, and giving you know, clear chances to teams. And I think if if they do that against Brentford tonight, then... We're in for a good chance to, to grab a goal or two um, with our striker on form and, and the front line. I think, yeah, it's going to be an entertaining game. So I'm going to go for a 2-2 Ooh, draw. Sounds like fun. Last week. Another 2-2 draw, yeah. <laughs> a Desmond 2-2.
Game Day Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Saturday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.